Hello again, it's Flick here with a different kind of creature feature for you guys today. Usually I have focused on one species, researching and going into depth on what fantastical applications of real world animal traits I can put on fictional creatures, but today I want to go into a little bit more depth about the world itself, building up the environment of this nebulous kind of zone I've established myself in, and see where it goes. As you saw in the thumbnail and in the speed paint before you now, I will be talking about my version of space coral. Coral reefs are an invaluable asset to our world's biodiversity and survival, so I knew that I had to include them in this reality to play a part in some way as well. There are several types of real-world reefs that I have based my coral formations on. Fringing reefs, barrier reefs, and atoll reefs. And the three coral ecosystems that they create in my world are orbital belts, asteroid belts, and atoll belts. First, we have orbital belts. These function much like the fringing coral reefs. Instead of clinging to the edge of the shoreline, they orbit large planetary bodies. Anything big enough to create its own gravitational pull has the potential to form its own orbital belt. Second is the asteroid belts. Not all asteroid systems will have coral ecosystems in them, but I wanted to combine barrier reefs and pre-existing asteroid belts to create a coral system that was further away from planetary bodies and on its own much like how the barrier reef functions in real life. Finally, there are atoll belts. Atolls are rings of island and fringing reefs that form around underwater volcanoes. Similarly, atoll belts are coral bodies that circle each other and freely roam through space. No matter the type of coral belt, they need to exist in the right temperatures. They will die off if it's too cold or too hot. Typically, they grow around 100 to 200 million miles away from a solar system star, but this may vary based on the size of the star and how much heat it puts out. Coral belts serve many beneficial purposes for the nebulous ecosystem. They are extremely diverse, and life living in and around them make up around 35% of all life in space. This biodiversity opens up a lot of potential for medicines, cures, and deadly poisons. They also protect large bodies of space from dangerous storms and debris. There is a limit to how much of a beating they can take, but it does provide a nice barrier between some of the harsher conditions of space. The coral are made of hard outer shells such as calcium, iron, and other rare living metals. Some coral survives on its own, acting more like Venus flytraps consuming things that come in its path. For other types of coral, various forms of carbon-based parasites and algae will live within the hard exoskeleton. These entities provide the coral with nutrients, and the coral provides them with protection. Often, these microorganisms will give the coral its color, and without them, the coral will die. In rare cases, sometimes the coral and algae will form sentient life. Coral are known as broadcast spawners. They will release two parts of DNA to merge with another and form billions of free-floating coral larvae. They need to find a place to attach that is sturdy enough, typically asteroids and space rock. But coral can grow on any non-naturally occurring space debris as well. Only about 5% of larvae will find safe landing. Most are eaten or float too far away. These coral belts see a lot of interaction. They can be a spot for tourism, a spot for research, or even a spot to help farm certain creatures. There's a lot of potential for what these environments can do. They would have naturally occurring enemies like being food to some creatures, and storms of debris hitting them would cause damage. But other sources of harm could be space pollution, overfishing, or having the relationship between coral and algae disturb somehow. There's so much potential with coral belts. Depending on where they are in the galaxy, this could open up new species and new uses as well. And that will do it for me this week. I would love to explore more specifics with coral belts in the future. This is a cool opportunity to look at the broad environment, but it can be built on later. If you like this video, please check out my others on different space creatures. And if you want to help me out, please consider hitting that like button, sharing this video, or subscribing. See you guys later, and thanks for watching!